Magic! Now today promises to be a very, very eclectic and a very short day. I'll explain. As I'm out flipping battery charges and trying to plan out a very, very short day, Karen has told me. We have several family things that have to be taken care of, but I do have about an hour to spend and I don't want to waste it. Now, I always know in the past, I always like to have big chunks of time, two, three, four hours, but even if I only have an hour, I don't want to waste it because we're coming up on that time of year. I want to ride. And we've got so many little things around the house as springtime comes have to be taken care of. I try to do a few of them every day and I'm trying to split up the day. In fact, I, I'm already trying to plan what I want to do today. So sometimes it's good to know that even if you only have a part of a day, some of the day, part of the day, whatever, we will get something done because we are really looking forward. I really want to get this done. And believe me, if it was up to me, I'd have a lot less things to do, but then I wouldn't be living in the house I live in, or Karen, would, uh, I'd let her down in some way, and she'd murder me. I have a couple more steps to do on this before I'm ready for the, uh, to put the back wheel back on. I've got to mount the tire, and there's a few other little details that have to be taken care of, and I probably can get at least an hour of work here today. And the algae bloom in the pond is starting to clean up. Once you run, the, it takes about a week of running the, the filters and the waterfall. Then we can actually start to see the fish moving around there. They're coming out of hibernation. And for sure, a couple of weeks from now, part of my job will be going to the gardening center every other day. It's that magic time of day. Magic. There's magic in that cup of coffee. Motivation. Well, we still have to finish up Glenn's tank when he has some time available. And we've got the little parts of the, uh, the rear wheel to assemble here. The cush drive has to be assembled. The sprocket has to be installed. Got a lot of little details to do today. I'll be able to get a lot of these done in the time available. So the first thing I want to do in this uh, session, I want to carefully look over and see if I've seen any scratches, anything I still want to address, because a lot of times you come back to a project the day after you work on it, and you say, oh, I missed a spot, I missed a spot. Well, so far, and, and I'm, this is the point I'm making. It's never too late to just touch something up, and it's a lot easier to touch it up here than it is once you put it on a motorcycle. Now, one of the things I want to really be careful when I'm doing it, and I'm using a razor blade here, when I take the masking tape off, because what happens when you have this amount of clear on things and you, you've built up some thickness around the parts, you want, I want this to come off. I don't want it to peel away a piece of the clear. And so I'm basically cutting the edge. And we've got a really nice, a decent amount. You can see the thickness of that. I want to get all the tape goop off. This is going to be not a five-minute job to do this. I want this to be a perfectly flat, clean surface to work off when I put these parts back together. I don't want to have any paint at all on this. And, of course, I want to clean the screw holes out with a little bit of I, what I use as parts cleaner because I'm going to lock tight these parts on. I don't want to have any, any issue that they're going to be a, a problem later on with bolts loosening up. And all of these little back masking is a, is a real pain in the neck to get off. I've seen many people just grab this and, and off comes. Now this for sure, you don't want to get any of this and none of it anywhere near painted surfaces. But I want to spray it on a Q-tip and get down into those threaded holes. Nowhere is near the paint. Now this is good for cleaning up. All of that rust that might be a corrosion might be in those threaded holes. What I'm trying to do is carefully cut along the edge with a brand new razor. 
There's one final little detail here is getting all of the paint off of the inside edge. And I've done the other ones. Because if there's paint in there, what's going to happen? This is not going to sit exactly right. It's just a question of trying to get this exactly the way it was before we painted the wheel. We'll do a test fit. I'm not going to put this on right now. It's easier to change the tire without this here. The tire doesn't rock as much. And so that'll make that easy. It's a really nice fit. Nothing binding there. All the bolts will line up just the way they should. Let's hope. Anyway. And I do have longer bolts for here, so I'm going to have to check that I don't have a clearance or a fit issue before I actually go out to put this on a motorcycle. So the, fish, the, the fit issue that I spoke about, I have the spacer in, and the disc carrier is going to go backwards. So now I want to put one bolt in like a test fit and just see if we have clearance. If not, I'm going to have to get shorter bolts or grind them or whatever. It looks like it'll be okay. But it was okay on a front wheel. And Glenn told me he thought it, wasn't going to, it was going to be a fit issue, but it looks like it wasn't. Maybe on a Ducati it's just a little bit different. This looks like, well, the only way we're going to know is to put one bolt in and see. Yeah, and as I rotate that... There's about a sixteenth of an inch of clearance. I think that'll be fine. So this side is done. We're ready to flip it over and do the other side. Now, even though you're not going to see inside here, because we're going to have the cush drive in here, I'd really like to have the paint as nice as it can be, just so it's just a lot easier when you go to work on a motorcycle. It's just nicer to work on clean stuff instead of stuff that's all gritty. And thinking back, you may remember what this wheel, if you've been watching some of these other videos, what this wheel looked like not that long ago. Big dent in it, rough surfaces, all kinds of, <laughs> all kinds of labor of love going on here. But I think we're finally closing in on it. The next thing is put that valve stem in. Before I can put the valve stem in, I've got to get all this back masking off the rim. And as you can imagine, it's an exciting part of the job. Here we go. Well, I may as well take all the back masking off now. And even on a day like today, when I really don't have a lot of time, it's always nice to get something done that at the end of the day, I can honestly look back and say, feel like I've got something accomplished and I was watching a show one time on Netflix there was a show on Netflix about what constitutes a happy life and one of the things was always right at the top of the list was doing productive work now we're ready for the final 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 assembly here and it's all we have time for today but it's been a good day and even a short day I always say it's better than a long day in Rikers Island. So this is what it's like to be Grandpa Wendy. <laughs> I, time to get miles from school. I guess we're not going to do any more work today on the motorcycle. <laughs> Live to fight another day. You want to sand some motorcycle parts down? No! You have no interest in sanding Wendy's grandpa with his motorcycle? Ah! What are you building? What are you building? A battleship? Watch, you're going to go off the table there. Make, push it over this way. So it doesn't fall off the table. Yeah, that's, that's good. Now you got it. So this morning as I come down to shop, it's always nice to put the motorcycle parts back after Miles turns our table into a Legoland here. But anyway, I've got to work on a wheel today. It's raining all day, so we should be able to get the wheel pretty much done, I hope. I've um, got a couple other little details to work on. Got to have the coffee first. And there's nothing more important early in the morning than having your coffee, that's for sure. 
And because it'll rain all day, we're going to try to plan out a day here. We've got a couple things to do on the honey-do list, but mainly to get that tire onto the rim, maybe even get the rim put on the bike. That would be really nice if the day plays out that way. But every day here is different. You never know what's coming. And usually when it's raining like it is in the morning here, the, even if it stops raining, the roads are always wet and you can't paint, so it, it limits what I can do, and I've got to plan around it. So I did my email this morning. Luciano's in Colorado, living it up with his son, of course, who lives in Colorado. I have a son in Colorado. Everybody loves Colorado here, I guess. Anyway, hope we get some pictures of uh, his son has the Ducati out there, too, that he took out to uh, Colorado, so that was pretty cool. And... All I can say is, I've enjoyed being out in Colorado. We've got to finish up Glenn's tank. Not going to do anything on it today while it's pouring rain out there right now, in fact. And one of the emails this morning, I was really happy to hear from Scott, who got the, the bug from the evil twin that I had mentioned in the last couple of videos a couple times. And... He's been thinking about doing a, for his ninja, getting a set of extra body work next winter and doing an evil twin. And I, what I suggest that he try or consider is getting that body work from China that's already painted. You don't have to do any, any Bondo work on it or anything. Just go right into painting it, sand it and paint it. And Luciano and I both have had good luck with that body work. And he's, he's made several R6s and ninjas and things that... Really came out nice and for a very, very little amount of money. So I have to go down a motorcycle mall in the next day or two. And we'll, we have a special thing we ordered from them. I'm going to be reviewing it. And always enjoy going down there, of course. Always a lot of fun. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting my stuff. And I'll, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag what it is. It'll be a review. And I think you'll enjoy it. That's coming up too. So we have to put the hub together, the Cush hub. Got to put the tire on the rim. Oh, that coffee tastes good this time of day. I got to put the uh, the valve in. It would be funny, just thinking, and I, I probably at some point in my life will do it. Put put the whole tire on the rim and go to put air in it, and there's no valve. That might that might be a real thrill. Now putting in these curvy girl valve stems. Couple of, a couple of things I do, I countersink the hole just a little bit, just take the edge off the top of the hole, make sure you can put your finger in there, because if there's a razor edge, what happens, it cuts this, and because we've had paint around it, there's a chance maybe your sandpaper's hit it, we put a drop of Dawn on there, any kind of soap, just to make that slide in there better, I don't want to damage it when I put it in. Now, the other thing with curvy girls, if you over-tighten that nut, there's a chance you can damage it. Now, this takes a little wiggle loggle once in a while. Oh, that, believe it or not, that one went right in. I guess because we've had this in and out so many times. Okay, now, that to make sure I get a perfect seal, I want to look inside, make sure that's perfectly straight. Believe it or not, this one came out pretty good. Sometimes it's a struggle to get them to do that. Now the other thing is you, I don't want to over-tighten this. I want this to be that I just, when I'm putting air in a tire, I'm not moving it. It doesn't have to be so tight. These are, these are thin aluminum, and they're machinable aluminum, which means it's probably relatively easy to break this because it's thin. In fact, I'm going to do this with my fingernails, and then just... Just take the, the wrench and just, I can, I can almost do it with my fingernails, but I'm going to do it with a wrench just, just a little bit more. I've already put the valve stem in. The reason is I don't want to have to turn this and, and take a chance nicking this if I forget to take the one that I have one with no uh, the part. It's very easy when you see everything happens when you have really nice products. When you have, if you have a fifty thousand dollar motorcycle, you don't want to scratch it. Well, I treat this like it's like it's a you know a fifty thousand dollar bike that I 
that I that I have five hundred dollars invested in. But there's no reason to treat anything other than like it's jewelry. Anyway, it's not. It's all beside the point. Anyway, I want to. Once this is done, I want to get ready to install a tire. I try always to cut the old tire off. Don't want to scratch the rims. And it's a, it's a sin, I think, when you go see somebody with a beautiful motorcycle and there's big chunks missing around the rim. And oh, and I don't care how many times you touch it up, you can, it's not perfect. It's better not to, it's better not to chunk it. To chunk it, I like that word. Anyway, let me get a wrench. Just, just grab, just put ever so little, just so I can't turn this, is plenty tight. Now it's definitely not a high-tech tip, but here's the thing. I hold a wrench like this. It's a 14 millimeter. If I put the socket end on there, I'm gonna I'm gonna tend to over tighten it. This doesn't give me enough leverage. And as soon as I feel that side starting to move, I know I'm getting that's perfect right there. Now because it's so cold outside and raining, we're forced to heat the tire. And it doesn't matter how you heat it. In this case, we got a nice quartz heater. I'll rotate that. They give it about five minutes to warm up. The warmer it is, the better. Now the quartz heater is not heating the air around it. It's it's heating the tire itself. So you can you actually can feel how warm it's getting. But in a perfect world, we would go out on a sunny day when it's 90 degrees. Put the tire out in the driveway on a black mat. It'll get to about 120 to 125. I can put that on just so easy. It's a little bit more difficult. It's hit or miss now. We may not even be able to get it on. Sometimes they go, sometimes they don't, but we'll certainly give it a try. The warm of the tire is the whole thing, is get the tire warm. Now while that's happening, I want to make sure I have the rim exactly the way I want to have it that I'm mounting the tire in the right rotation, of course, and that I have the heavy spot. Now the heavy spot, in the, in the tire itself, and this is information we got from Rich Peabody, you can feel where the joint is. You can just feel it with your hand, there's a lump. That's the heavy part of the tire. We wanna put that on the opposite side of the, and I'll mark it with a pen or something. I wanna put that on the, the opposite side when I go to put this on, of course. But warm tire is the whole trick. If you live in a warm weather climate, you should never pay anybody to mount tires. All right, here again, here's the product that we're using, Nomar Tire Mount and Lubricant. You only have to put it on one side of the tire. On one side of the rim, I'm sorry. Now, to be honest, the Dawn works just as good, but since we already had this donated to the A-Team course, trying to use it, but Dawn does work just as well, I think. Now I had a nice tire heating box that uh, made the rounds of the A-Team and <laughs> never came home, so somebody must have really liked my heating box. And the trick is if you hold your hand on it, most people can hold a hand on 120 degree stuff, it doesn't have to be 120. And then another factor of mountain tires, the, the big tires on the back rim go on easier, certainly easier than RD or uh, the tires on a GS. Those are a bear to get on. These are relatively easy. The bigger the tire is, the easier it goes on. The wider the rim, the easier it goes on too. Hey, right, so what we did, we marked which side of the tire we're going to use. This is going to go this way. And this is, this is the best way to do this. I, w I need to know the valve is going to be here, so I don't want to have this. I want this tape not to go down into the bead, but be about halfway down the rim. Wrap it around. Wrap it with your hand. This has all been figured out before. Pull this end up. I think this tape is going to be too short. Once you get it here, if the tire is soft, it's relatively... Yeah, that'll be fine. Then I do one at 3 o'clock. You need four strips. And if this doesn't work out the way you like, you go back and reheat the tire, which we are, we have had to do many times. But when it's your lucky day, and you never can tell when it's your lucky day. The whole objective of all this is not to scratch the rim. And I don't know of any better way to avoid scratching the rim myself. 
And if I have to do this over two or three times or reheat the tire, it's not a real problem. Okay, now, the only thing I have to do is put the lube on the one side that's going to go over the tire. Both sides on this, just to make it a little bit easier. We're really hoping it's going to be our lucky day. But you never know, it's okay to do this. If I have to, I can put it back, back on the heat. I've got to get this off my hands, or else you'll never get it down on there. Okay, we've got to get the rotation. Let's make sure we have the rotation right. Now well, let's see, we got the valve on this side, the rotation going that way. The valve is over here. Magic! This usually just gets the bead roughly seated. If you have a compressor, turn it up to the maximum. And that hopefully will pop it on the first shot. Now we only have a few more tires left to mount before this season's over and the riding season really gets here. But the tire mounting is usually relatively straightforward. There you go. Pop, pop. Fizz, fizz. Now I'm putting 50 pounds of air in to test for leaks. Got 50 pounds of air in now. Don't need that over here. Fifty right on a dot. Okay, so I want to get some. Some Windex is always good because it'll help clean the wheel. Make sure the bead is seated nice on both sides. First thing is to see if we have a, a good seating on the bead. And you know right away if you see any bubbles, the odds are good. What happened is you didn't get out all the tape. In which case you gotta let the air out, pop it back down. The valve, since these valves we've already used them, we know they're pretty good. Never had a problem other than when you ordered them, they always seem to send the wrong one, but hey. Maybe you should check if you have an 8 or 11 millimeter hole before you order them <laughs> in the wheel. Okay, that side looks great. Now I would always, even if this were the riding season, I would always want this to sit maybe an hour or so before I put it back on a bike. We're not going to put it back on a bike immediately here. In fact, the way the day is playing out, you never know. So anyway... Once I know that that's not a problem, I don't have any indication I've got a leak. Now basically I can clean, what I can do now is get a clean rag, clean up all that lube that's on the tire, clean everything up, see how our balance worked out if we're close or if we're off in left field. And the whole idea of everything from right from the get-go is you put all this time and energy into a wheel or to a motorcycle. And you don't want I don't want it all beat up and and I know people that that do not agree. Motorcycle makes them look tough or something. I don't. For me it people know I'm not tough. So so I can have a nice motorcycle. <laughs> have it nice and clean. Anyway. We'll let this sit. Time for a cup of coffee. Little tip that might be worth ha having. I get, I keep all my, all the stuff I use for changing tires in one container. Always easy. <clears throat> Move it back and forth whenever I need to change a tire. And for sure, if you're going to do any serious riding in a riding season, you're going to wear out some tires. That's for sure. And I hope this summer we get to wear out a lot of tires. That would be a wonderful way to spend the summer. So everything held up just about as good as I could expect. We've pre-fitted this. We know we don't have a clearance issue. <clears throat> Brand new Bolt Depot bolts. 
new and polished both blue Loctite and the rest of this will just be a piece of cake all the hard work is done today and the hard work is always if it's your lucky day and that tire just drops right on like this one did piece of cake the days it doesn't do that <laughs> well that changes your whole outlook on life it's how people become drunks anyway i'm going to get not to make a big thing out of this but tighten the bolts on a cross pattern and then at the very end when they're all in and torqued down torque them the factory spec and we are good good to go here good to go this, this really turned out to be a good day, and you, the problem is you never know when it's going to be a good day. I just hand tighten these just a little bit right now. You never know when it's going to be that day that it is your lucky day, and then there's that day it is not your lucky day. Now, as I, I have always said, I like to have every day different than the day before, and this day is turning out to be a little different. I've got to go on a mission of mercy. So the way this played out, the kids got their new furniture delivered today and they wanted to get this out of the house and we decided we we're going to put this in our guest bedroom and luckily it just fits in the, uh, in the Toyota. Just what I need. I need another project, something else to polish. What I, it's about two hours since I and we got exactly the same air pressure so I would assume we are good to go here now one of the things I was worried about when I originally did this because I had put some <clears throat> some bondo by the rim and I thought maybe that would knock the rim out of balance in some way well it's it's as close to it's, there's, there's no nobody I know would even put a weight on that. Yeah, that really came out great. But that whole trick that Peabody uh, shared with us about these Michelin tires having that that joint opposite the valve, we've we've probably done eight or ten tires since he told me that, and every one is balanced real close, really close. Yeah, it's. You don't need to have it any closer than that, that's for sure. And it's not losing air, so I guess we're ready to put this back on a bike. Now, there's only one real problem. We ate up about two and a half hours over at the kids moving furniture and uh, what, whatever we did there, drink coffee, more coffee, I guess. But anyway, I wanted to, I want to put the cush drive together and I want to have this all set up for tomorrow morning to get out to the garage, try to get the back wheel. I'm trying to plan this day out. Uh, because if I try to rush it now, it's too late in the day, and I'm I'm not going to do the job that I'll do if I do it first thing in the morning. Mountain, getting this tire back on the bike is uh, a big job. It's it's a pain in the neck, but we'll get it done. Anyway, that is that is about as good as it gets. So our hub really came out nice. I am very excited about getting this put together. The sprocks that we've used over the years, we've got them on four or five of the bikes now. They they never wear out, basically. The, the rivets that they use stay tight. And so I, it's my my feeling, once you get a sprocks, you, you're done for the rest of your life, unless you live a lot longer than other people I know. I want to get some blue Loctite on these bolts. I want to get them hand tight in opposite directions, the way you would put a head on an engine. I've cleaned all this up, and these are special locking nuts, so we don't want to change anything back here. But like every day of my life, I wake up in the morning and I never know what's, what's going on. I didn't know the kids were going to have that delivered. They weren't supposed to deliver it for a couple days. I got a big brass headboard to polish now, and we're going to set that up in our guest bedroom. Just one more thing. It, it's just... It's good to be busy when you're my age, and I'm going to be 74 very soon, sooner than I want. It's good to be busy. And you know you're busy? I guess that's one way you can tell if you're still alive. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get these torqued down. This is going to be 
I think the last project, but we're ready to go for tomorrow. And boy, that's hopefully going to be a day. It'll be a little bit nicer to work outside tomorrow. I'm psyched. We'll have the back wheel on the bike. The next step on that, I don't even know. Maybe the fairing. But every day we're just closing in on it. It just never ends. This, this time of year, the weather's getting better. The bike is getting put together. It couldn't be a lot nicer than that. It just couldn't be more fun. Unless you find me the fountain of youth. And I will not be holding my breath. Now in the end, setting the torque with a torque wrench. Probably a really good idea on this port, since this is really doing a lot of work. And by the way, this is not a Harbor Freight. This is a real torque wrench. Now what's going to happen, because we have paint in here, all the cush drive holes, I want to get the paint out of the hole using a number 11 blade, because what will happen if not, I'm going to be forcing it in and it's going to be a problem. These, these cush drive rubber things get forced in and I don't want to make a problem that the next time I take them out, they, uh, they self-destruct or whatever. Good old number 11 blade falling apart at the seams. See, that's the problem with all the tools in the shop. We really use them. If, when I've been to a place that does work on things, and I used to be a partner in a machine shop, we'd go to other people's machine shops and they had, oh my God, these beautiful tools and things hanging on a wall and everything's polished. And, and then we'd find out they didn't get the contract. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> okay, now these things, these I want to clean up a little bit, and they go in in a certain sequence because the, the thick ones go on acceleration, the thin ones go on deceleration. Seems to help some of the time. There's a little bit of WD-40 on that rubber piece. Just a drop. And it's very convenient that they, the design, they stay in play. Oops, as he smashes his finger. They do stay in place, where some of the designs, when you take the wheel off, the things go flying all over the place. All right, that couldn't have gone any better. So we're basically at the end of the day, and that is ready to install. Well, we're coming up on the part of this project that's really going to be fun. Next couple of days, I'm out of energy from the last day. <laughs> Moving all that furniture around and everything. Doesn't really matter. I'll be rejuvenated in the morning. Nothing 12 cups of coffee won't do to get me motivated. Anyway, every time I look at these parts, I just can't wait to see this all in one piece. The wheel, that... I, I don't know anybody's got a better wheel than that. I looked in motorcycle mall at bikes that were $39,000 and they didn't have a better finish than that. I don't know. All in the eye of the beholder. Always have to keep that in mind. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and go move some furniture. And thanks for watching.